Hi, everybody. My name is Tracy Walker. Uh, I uh, work for SUSE. I'm a senior security engineer with SUSE. We're in a booth right over here. Um, and I'm here to talk to you today about EKS security, so specifically Kubernetes security, and how to secure EKS with eight or five security layers, depending on how you take a, the, what we talk about today. Uh, my background is in software development, operations. I uh, spent 20 years inside IT operations and software development. Uh, and consulting, did a lot of consulting to CEOs, CIOs about how to manage their IT departments. Um, and then in the last eight, 10 years, I've been working uh, sales. I am lucky to be working with uh, SUSE and New Vector. New Vector was acquired by SUSE uh, a couple of years back, about two and a half years ago. Uh, New Vector has been around for about 10 years now and is an open source project. So everything that you're going to see today, this is not really a typical vendor pitch, right? We're not, I'm not necessarily saying, um, you know, go buy this thing, because what you're about to see is 100% open source. Uh, you can use it today. Uh, there's no limitations on how you use it. You can uh, install it and get it up and running in an EKS cluster or any Kubernetes cluster, and that can be Rancher, which is also uh, SUSE project, OpenShift, Tanzu, EKS, all the cloud providers. If you're running Kubernetes, you can use New Vector to secure it. Um, so everything we're going to talk about is 100% open source and free. Uh, yes, SUSE does sell services support for that. That's why I came up with the graphic there. Uh, that's what it looks like when you're basically doing things without support, right? We love to watch people climb things. Uh, but if you'd like a really nice belay, services, support, helping with your security, yes, we're there for that. And if you are going to download, because we are available on uh, the AWS Marketplace, if you, you pull us and use uh, New Vector from the AWS Marketplace, you will be using the supported version, which is exactly the same as the open source version. So you're just getting support, training, and things like that. The really cool thing about this is it's Kubernetes native. You can install it with Helm, you can install it directly from the Rancher catalog, you can install it uh, very, very easily and quickly. Um, and I will admit that the installation in 10 minutes, that's a little bit of exaggeration, it's probably more like five. Very easy to install, very easy to get up and running, uh, deploy quickly, and use, we use config maps, all of the things that you would expect from a Kubernetes deployment. Four of the layers I'm about to talk about you can deploy with one click, like literally just turn them on. Um, I'm speaking in terms of security layers because typically when you're talking to a vendor or security products or things like that, they don't necessarily talk about security layers, they talk about functions. Um, in my background and in my experiences, we always kind of talk about security layers because number one rule in security is no layer is perfect. Every layer has uh, you know, weaknesses or things that it can't block. That's why we use layers. No layer is perfect. We use, you know, more than one security layer. We're just basically applying lots of nets with different size holes to catch the things we're trying to catch, right, in the kill chain or, or however else. So very easy to configure most of these. Um, some of these layers you cannot do with any other tool. And yes, I'm well aware of all of the vendors who are selling Kubernetes or security tools, uh, but because this is network centric, it is going to be different in particular when we're talking about eBPF. So eBPF is one of those popular tools that a lot of tools are using. Um, and New Vector can take advantage of eBPF, but that is not our source of truth when we're talking about the network functions, how we inspect network traffic and things like that. And that's where our patents are. We have nine patents. Uh, these are not just like, oh, we're doing something a little bit different, patent it quick. This is actually because in the development of New Vector, uh, our founders had a network background. They had worked for companies like Cisco and uh, some other vendors. And so they had a very network-centric approach to building a, essentially a network device inside of Kubernetes that could do the network inspection that you're not getting when you're using uh, eBPF. Like, so eBPF is good at showing you routes, so like layer three, layer four information, is kind of like having a paper map. You know where the route goes and where it should be, right? 
but you don't know what cars are on that map. Um, map. You don't know what's in the trunk. You don't know what color the cars are, who's driving it, what's in the trunk of that car, the payload, right? So layers five, six, and seven of the network stack, New Vector inspects that. Uh, and I'll explain kind of how we do that in a little bit. Even better news, because SUSE is focused on improving everyone's security, you can use this tool with other security tools. In fact, most of our, uh, uh, the majority of our successes with customers is they have been using New Vector on their own, they installed it. In fact, one of the best stories is we have a new user who installed it and immediately started getting a SQL injection attack. One of those security layers is for threat detection. And when they first saw that, they thought, wow, this tool sucks, it's, <laughs> it's so noisy. Has somebody put this thing in demo mode? Um, they didn't believe it. But our threat detection also comes with a packet capture. And when they looked at that packet capture, that looks like SQL commands. This looks real. And so the first meetings they had were not with SUSE, they were with their security vendors, asking them, why are you guys not showing us this? We validated that this is a legitimate attack. It's happening right now, and you, your tools aren't showing us this. That's because they don't see the payload of the network traffic inside of Kubernetes. It's a blind spot, and I'm here to show you how you can kind of cover that blind spot. So, let's talk security layers. So I'm gonna give you a, a rundown quickly of the eight security layers, and then I'm gonna talk about the five that you can configure in less than five minutes. And this is like, once you spend the five minutes installing New Vector, you get five layers of security pretty much right away. Uh, so let's start with breaking down like the supply chain layers. Uh, you're probably very familiar with things like vulnerability scanning, scanning for CVEs, CIS security scanning, so checking all the security settings on the platform, Kubernetes, EKS, as well as the nodes, if you have access to them, and the containers running in those nodes. So we're doing all the compliance checks, and we can do this both in the supply chain as well as in the runtime environment. You'll notice I didn't double count here, right? It's the same two security layers. We're just applying them at different checkpoints, right? So that doesn't mean it's a different security layer. It's the same security layer, just at different places. But that's valuable because we can do it in multiple places. The third and last supply chain layer is at the end of the supply chain, or essentially at the perimeter of your cluster. And this is the Kubernetes native admission control policies, right? This is a checkpoint security where we're just checking the image to make sure that it has certain policies applied. And because our admission controller is aware of the CVEs, we know if it has CVEs, which CVEs, by name. Um, we can also do things like making sure that the image came from a specific registry, or did the image have secrets in it? All different kinds of things that we can check for. And these are pre-built rules. We have 31 rules that you can choose from that basically you can just point and click and add these things very, very quickly. So those are the three supply chain layers. Let's get into some of the exciting runtime layers. So first of all, the network segmentation and the file process segmentation, these are our zero trust layers. So we learn the behavior of your application. And that network inspection I was talking about earlier, we're using that to see all the network traffic east-west inside of the cluster. So we build policies from that because we like our source of truth. It's independent of eBPF. We know what the traffic looks like. And we are also doing deep packet inspection. We can see the protocol and we can validate that protocol. So these are layer seven network policies, not the layer three, layer four network policies that you may be used to that other products will kind of do or that are native to Kubernetes. So these are layer seven policies. These are zero trust, meaning when we learn them, these are allow rules. We deny everything else by default, right? And zero trust is super powerful. We will use that in combination with the network threat detection. So that's the layer of the story I was talking before. So yes, we can detect uh, actual threats that are coming in. And when we see those threats, we do an automatic packet capture of those threats. And this is one of the checkpoints I would say if you're using a tool today in Kubernetes, in EKS, if you want to see if it really is seeing the, the network traffic, find out if that tool can do packet capture. I offer that challenge because I know they can. <laughs> so check on it, validate what I just said. But yeah, we do threat detection. Now, 
The threat detection is signature based, right? We have a list of all these different attacks, SQL injection, DDoS, all kinds of, you know, run for shell. And that's signature based. So that means we're just checking all those signatures and if we haven't seen it, or if we do see something we recognize, that's what we're gonna try to alert you on or block and do the packet capture. But that's not zero trust. And zero trust is effective because if we don't have a signature, then I, yeah, if we don't have a signature for that attack and we don't know what it looks like, our threat detection is not gonna pick it up, right? So how does Zero Trust help us with this? Well, we know, we may not know what the attack looks like, but we know what it doesn't look like. It doesn't look like your application because we learned what your application does. So anything that is not your application that's trying to execute processes, trying to establish new network connections, ingress, egresses, pod to pod, we can do that micro segmentation with that network layer and that's, we can break that down. I mean, um, we can uh, secure those network communications. If you're using Istio or a network mesh, we work with that network mesh. I'm picking up some feedback, I'll step back. Uh, we work with network meshes. So like I said, we work with other tools so you can add these security layers without necessarily bothering, disrupting, or replacing other layers. Um, yes, you could choose tools, but again, we're here about securing your EKS clusters, Kubernetes, so you can add these layers. Let's continue uh, two more layers, uh, the data leak prevention and the web application firewall. So these two layers are very similar. One is on ingress traffic and the other is on the egress traffic. The data leak prevention, so if you're SOC 2 compliant and you haven't had an examination in the last 18 months or so, we're seeing more and more companies that are SOC 2 compliant and need some kind of DLP for the EKS clusters. So we're seeing that kind of request more and more. We have DLP, we can inspect that network traffic. You can customize the sensors. So these two layers, uh, seven and eight, these are regex based. That means you can customize what that looks like. Now for the DLP, we want to customize those to what it looks like in your database. Like if you're storing credit card numbers, so security numbers, any kind of proprietary data, how you're storing it, that's how we want to generate those sensors. So if we see that data leaving a cluster or a pod and it's not supposed to, we can say, hey, that's not supposed to leave. And that will pass your compliance check on DLP for SOC 2. The ingress WAF sensor works exactly the same way on the ingress. But in this case, we get to define what those look like. So we have defined a lot of rules for OAuth top 10. We have a rule for log for shell that has been validated in the field as stopping real log for shell attacks, able to pick that up on the ingress. And then we can block it on the ingress before it reaches your cluster, before it actually reaches inside your you know, like the eBPF, it has to hit the kernel of the worker nodes. We can stop things before it hits the kernel of the worker nodes because we are in the network path, right? Um, so those are the eight layers. Now, I promised five layers in five minutes or five layers in 20 minutes. I think the 20 minutes was the presentation. Um, these are the layers. Let's just go through these real quick. So these uh, in the pipeline, if you're doing the pipeline scan, I see the colors are a little different up here. <laughs> uh, these two layers, uh, if you turn on the registry scanning, it might take you five minutes to set those up, okay? And I'm not even recommending you start here. Um, if you're doing pipeline scanning and you're scanning in your pipelines, don't change that. If I can give you any security advice here today, don't trust our scanner, don't trust any scanner. Use multiple scanners, because you're gonna get different results. And if you're getting different results, you want to know why. And you shouldn't trust any. I know in the DOD, uh, they use three different scanners and they compare those results. And it feels like it's more work, but you start to get a feel for which scanners are more, more accurate. But again, none of them are 100% accurate. Not ours, not anybody's, right? Just some friendly security advice there. So don't start there. I would start here. Our admission control is super easy to configure, get set up, turn on, add five or six rules. We even recommend five basic ones to get started with. So let's just say two minutes per rule. The network segmentation is two clicks. There's a discover mode, 
And then you can even go into the settings and have it automatically move to our monitor mode. We have a monitor mode that is alert only. So discover and alert are tapping network traffic. We're not in line. No performance impacts. We learn the traffic. We learn all the processes happening on those containers and the nodes. And we can make rules for those. And then you can automatically move to monitor mode without even having to manage it. So those two are almost completely automated. The network threat detection, completely automated. You don't have to turn it on. You don't have to turn it off. It's always there. And that's why the story of the company that installed it and immediately was like, we got an attack. Is this demo mode? It's because you can't turn it off. It's always checking for things, always on. Um, and again, no performance impact because we're tapping network traffic. Uh, the vulnerability scanning. So this is one click inside the cluster. So again, I'm not talking about the pipeline or registry. Just in the cluster, click a button, and you have all your compliance scanning and your CVE scanning turned on for all containers and the nodes and the platform instantaneous. Well, it'll scan for a minute or two, but that's all automatic, so it's one click. The network egress for DLP and WAF, those you may have to spend a little bit more time with. Those are probably the last two because you got to do a little customization. You want to be, have it in tune with your environment, right? So our recommendation is that you start with these right here. Set up some emission control. Click the buttons for your network segmentation. Click the buttons for your, uh, for your vulnerability CIS scanning. Network threat detection is automatic. That's less than five minutes if my math is correct over here. So. If it's five to 10 minutes to install, and within five minutes I can get one, two, three, four, five security layers turned on like that, I think I just made my presentation a true thing. It is that easy. This is not hyperbole. Uh, real quick, because I know you're probably like, how are you doing this? This all seems a little too magical. Real quick on the architecture, we are Kubernetes native. You deploy us in a Kubernetes with Helm exactly as you would. We have a microservice architecture. We run controllers that are the kind of the hub. Uh, if you're familiar with Kubernetes, you know what a controller is, but that's what we're collecting all that data, synchronizing all the things that we're getting from everywhere else. Um, the scanners run uh, in a container. The CVE database is built into that container. So there's no phone home, uh, there's no SaaS components to this, air gap capable, FedRAMP capable. If you're running a FedRAMP environment, and you install new vector in that environment, you are still FedRAMP capable because there is no SaaS, there's no phone home. We run in those air gap environments. So we don't change your FedRAMP uh, status. Scanners are very fast. The UI for the, is also its own container. Uh, we do have full API capability. We've had users who don't use the UI much and they do everything through automated API calls. And then finally, our very last container, this is where all the magic happens. We run an enforcer as a daemon set. That's one container per node. And that container is going to inspect that network traffic. It taps the vNIC of the node. So we're not focused on the kernel. We're focused on the virtual network interface that's coming off that node. That's where the traffic is. And when we tap it, we make a copy of it. That's where we do our inspection. That's why we're able to do all this without impacting performance. Now, when we're in the blocking mode, yes, we are in line. You get a little bit of latency added to it, but it's going to be microscopic. Uh, it's really per node within the node. So you can expect no performance impacts by using a tool like this. I have a minute 15. I do not have time. I was actually going to show you how to configure these things, but it's actually so easy. We can skip that. 